Hello, this is Surly Amy, and I am lucky enough to be here with singer, songwriter, <laughs> geek icon extraordinaire, Marion Call. So can you please <laughs> tell us, for someone that is not familiar with your music, what style it is? Just give a little breakdown. The style is, is music nerd style. If you were the kind of kid who had a lot of stories from this one time at band camp or this one time at choir camp, then you'll recognize that I play in a whole bunch of styles and that um, I mean everything from jazz to punk to folk to semi-classic orchestral to, you know, I do a wide range, basically unified by music nerd. So. That brings me to my next question. You are super in touch with the, the geek culture, and I was wondering, were you interested in music first, or were you more interested in geek stuff? I can't separate them, because they were both from childhood. Like, I grew up in a music household, and music theory was what I knew as a kid. It was what my dad made me study. It was, you know, some parents make their kids learn useful things. My parents made me learn music theory. And uh, I also, you know, at the same those same years that I remember having that, passion developed for music, I also remember developing a passion for like old sci-fi, Ray Bradbury, Isaac Asimov, and um, Star Trek Next Generation was the one thing I could stay up late and watch on Saturday, you know, with my dad, and uh, every kind of game, every, yeah, I, so I, it's hard to separate them. Cool. Um, another question I was wondering is, do you ever try to educate with your music? Because at Mad Art Lab, we do a lot of try trying to cross over with art and science education. And have you ever tried to any of your songs to send a message? Um, absolutely, although my messages are more, I would say, social than strictly factual or educational. I'm very interested in dialogue and the importance of trying to understand the perspectives of people who are not like you, because I feel like education is made a lot easier by being able to actually empathize with people who have a different perspective. And both for educators and for <laughs> students, if you can imagine someone having a different perspective from you and where it comes from, then then they're going to be willing to listen to a message you might have for them, you know? And if you just shout without understanding where they're coming from, that's not going to work. So in, kind of embedded in my music are a lot of sort of unifying human themes. And I really love frequently looking out at my audiences. And I secretly know that there are a ton of conservatives and there are a ton of liberals and there's a ton of red and blue and a ton of atheists and really religious people and pagans and you know people of every kind of sexual persuasion and they're all like having a really good time in the same room because they don't know that they just like each other yet and I really enjoy that because I feel like that's where that's where education can begin is when people realize their common humanity. That's fantastic. That was a very long answer. <laughs> that, that was great. It was very inspirational. Um, another thing that I've noticed that you're really excellent at is keeping in touch with the internet community. And I was wondering if you could give any advice to maybe other artists, how they can stay in touch. Like, what have you found is the best avenue? Is it Twitter? Is it Facebook? Um, how do I, you communicate best? I would say that I communicate best on Twitter, but I think that for other people, I would advise them to find the one that feels the most natural for them. Like, some people are much more natural communicators on Facebook or in person or you know I, I find that Twitter comes really naturally to me but I know a lot of artists who don't like it or don't get it or don't feel like it's home for them and I don't think they're probably going to succeed there except for you know letting people know when their concert is or where they're going to be or that they have a new piece of art out like the facts that's good to have everywhere but I, I would advise people to go where they're comfortable contacting people and really try to excel there instead of try and do what everyone else is doing. Awesome. Are you working on any new projects right now? I just finished a huge project, so I'm not necessarily thinking, yeah, I, I released an album a couple months ago, and it's still, it was such a huge project that it still feels <laughs> very new to have it out. I'm excited about it. It's called Something Fierce. It's a two-volume album. Please tell people and where they can get it, too. They can get it at MarianCall.com, and on iTunes, and on Spotify, and on Amazon, and anywhere else. But if and they it's get it at awesome. Marian it's really super good. <laughs> Go get it. If they get it at MarianCall.com, then it's better. Okay. Plus they got all the liner notes and everything. I'm big on liner notes. And it's a double album, so it's like two big discs and like tons of pages and pictures and stuff. And I miss that from when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. Like I would go home and listen to an album in front of the stereo lying on the floor and read all the words. And you, you can't really do that anymore, you know? And so I, I totally I love that went you back that. to that. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Oh yeah, absolutely. Thanks for fantastic. Marionecall.com, check her out.